It's one of the world's most popular vacation destinations. The white sandy beaches, tropical climate, and friendly people make the Bahamas a little paradise on Earth. And it was here, on an island just 21 miles long by seven miles wide, that Dr. Miles Monroe rose to international fame. Cultivate means to bring out the best in everything around you. It was also here, on November 9, 2014, that the unthinkable happened. While flying in bad weather to a leadership conference, Monroe's plane hit a crane on approach to the airport. All on board died, including Monroe's wife, Ruth, two pastors from his church, and five others. The tragedy led many to ask... Why? Why did this have to happen? And I think in that moment, it kind of caused all of us to question for a moment. Just four months later, the sounds of praise continued to rise from Bahamas Faith Ministries Fellowship in Nassau, the church Monroe founded. The big difference, their beloved pastor of more than 30 years is no longer at the helm. There's a hole in all of our hearts. The pain, we still feel it. Um, it, it is still hard to believe and accept. We lost our pastor, we lost our mentor, we lost someone who taught us. Monroe's children, Miles Jr. and daughter Carissa, lost more than anyone that horrible day. 31-year-old Miles Jr., who normally shuns the stage, spoke at his parents' funeral. There are no words. There is only faith and trust in God. Although still grieving, Miles Jr. sat down to talk with us about how he's doing. That depends on the day you ask me that question. Some days I honestly don't feel like doing anything. You know, I just feel like uh, not talking to anybody, just kind of being to myself. What is helping you go forward now? My faith in God keeps me moving. It, it allows me to know that, uh, you know, this is a part of some bigger plan that he has, and eventually, you know, it'll, it'll reveal itself. So how do you fill the shoes of a man who is an international speaker, author of 69 books, headed up a global ministry, and loved people so much, he wanted everyone to know their value and purpose? You don't. His Says new pastor, Dr. Dave Burroughs. When it comes to filling his shoes, I realized that I'm left and I'm the, there's only two of us connected to the vision. So somebody has to carry the vision on. You were supposed to be on that flight. I was. I said, sorry, Chief, um, I can't go because my daughter and I, we bought tickets to leave on Monday morning. So I said, I can't, I can't make it. That day, Dr. Burroughs' wife, Angela, also lost a good friend, Monroe's beloved wife, Ruth. Ruth was not a person who sought fame or glory. Ruth said and understood her purpose. And she said even two days prior to the tragedy, she said, my purpose is to serve my husband. To me, it seemed like my dad was just reaching his peak, you know, and just about to go into that next phase of his ministry, of his life. I was, I was excited for it. I was excited to be a part of it. Interestingly, just a week before his death, Monroe spoke of death on this talk show. I think it's my, it's my beautiful statement of dying. It says, it is finished. I want to die because there's nothing else to keep me alive. I've done what I was born to do. Maybe that's what his life or where his life was supposed to end, you know, at the peak. So, you know, all of us now can take this vision forward. Today, Miles Jr. continues to head up his father's international ministry and is working on establishing the Miles Monroe Foundation to honor his father. I want to make sure that I, I carry this legacy um, and carry it the right way. You know, my sister and I, we, we, have, um, we have a lot that we, we want to do, um, a, a lot that we feel that needs to be done. What's the thing you miss the most? I miss being able to, I, my dad was, to me, the smartest man I've ever met. I felt like I could have gone to him and uh, asked him for advice or, you know, his opinion on anything. I miss those one-on-one -on -one conversations. So that's what I miss about my dad. My mother, I miss 
Uh, I miss making her smile. I used, it was always so easy for me to put a smile on her face. Um, I'm a mama's boy, so, you know, it was, her and I had a special relationship. I want you to die because you poured out all of your dreams, ideas, visions, books, music, inventions, publications, that you died empty. That's the goal of life. Although there will never be another Miles Monroe, his legacy will live on in the hearts and lives of the people he touched here in the Bahamas and around the world. Wendy Griffith, CBN News, Nassau, Bahamas.